Okay, hello guys. You can't really see me. Um, this is Sherry. Welcome to Sew and Share. Um, somebody had asked me to do a video about my machine. They wanted to know how to thread it, the features, all that kind of stuff. So I know you guys probably aren't really interested in this. So I will be getting another video up that might be of more interest to you. But just to let you know, this one's just all about the machine. So, um, first this machine is a uh, Viking um, 830. I love it. It has tons of features. It's great. So it does, you know, you have the, it comes with a handbook and a user guide, um, which has all the information that you're going to want. I don't know how well this video is, is going to be. I don't really have the equipment and I am using my camera audio because my son's not here and I don't know where the SD card is. Oh, to wind the bobbin, you just take, you know, put the thread through here, put it right through the tension thing. I have a lot. You don't really need to leave this much out. But then I just wind it around. Make sure that you're putting the side with the circle. There's one side that has a circle and one side that doesn't. Circle side goes up. Pop it right on the bottom winder. This is too much thread. Too much thread. That is just not going to work. Come on, you. Anyway, then just, oh my goodness, whatever. I just want to do this. There. And then close it. Push the foot pedal. And it will mind. And it just will, you know, fill up. If you want it full, it will stop. This one stops when it's full. If you don't, just stop it whenever. When you're done, just push it back, lift it up, and you're done. You are done. To put it in the machine, I don't know how well you can see this, but you just take your bobbin. This one's full already. Um, same thing, side with the circle. Pop it in there. Um, just bring it up through here. There's a little lever. Like put it up through there. Bring it through here, down through here, and then just slide the case on. Okay. To thread it, the red spool, it can either go horizontally or vertically. I like vertical better. Just bring it up through here, down, and up through here. And then it has arrows to tell you where to go. Just bring it down, up, catch the... I can't see what I'm doing here. Ah, what am I doing? Ah, catch the thread guide. Bring it down. There's a little loop there. Do that, and then thread it. Um, so, you don't need to bring your needle down and up to pick up your thread your bobbin thread if you don't want to because it will do it automatically on your first stitch. Um, so I'm going to talk about these buttons right here first, okay? So this button right here is a speed button. It just controls the speed of the machine. Um, this, these two buttons are a fix and a stop button. What they are is the fix button is when you're starting to sew, you just hit that. And then when you're starting to sew, it just makes a little knot. So it just go up and down in place for like just five stitches. I mean, just like five times maybe. And then it stops and it goes forward. It just makes a little knot instead of reversing. Same to when you get to stop and you're done and you want to make a knot at the end, you just click the stop button and then um, it does it again just goes like this for about five times and then just automatically stops and doesn't go forward like the fix button. Or else, if you don't want to use that, there's a reverse button. So that will just go forward and back. Reverse. Um, this button right here is the needle up and down button. So when you want your needle down, you just press that. You don't have to use the hand wheel then. When you want it up, just go like that and it will press up and it will come up. These two buttons right here are 
press her foot up. So when you want your press her foot up, you just left that button. When you want your press her foot down, you just push that button. Um, it does not have a lever in the back for the presser foot to go up and down. This is how you do it. This is how the presser foot works. When you start sewing, uh, I'll do a little thing. You can see, well you won't be able to see because you can't see my foot on the foot pedal, but as soon as I push the foot pedal down to start sewing, the presser foot goes down automatically. So you don't have to do anything. Um, yeah, which when I use other machines, I have a tendency to forget that, and I forget to hit the lever, because I'm so used to this just automatically doing it. Um, but anyway, so them are what these mean. Here is the tension for the top tension. You know, I use it sometimes, but um, not all the time. I don't know how well you can see this over here, but these are the just stitches. And what's really nice about this is they will automatically set the best stitches length and everything for the fabric that you're sewing on. Um, so for example, A. A is a light woven. B is a medium woven. C is a heavy woven. D is a light stitch or light stretch. E is a heavy stretch. Um, I do not know. Oh, F is vinyl, I think. I think F is vinyl. And G is leather. So let's say I, I had a light woven and I wanted to do, because then there's stitches down here. So this number one means just a regular straight stitch. So if I had a light woven and I wanna do a regular straight stitch, there you go, it switches to the stitch length to be 2.0. It tells you that you need a 70 needle in there, and it also tells you to use the A presser foot. Um, if I wanted a light stretch, it just changes. So for the light stretch, straight stitch, you can see it's a little zigzag. It's telling you to use 75 stretch, the A presser foot, and that's the stitch length. Let's say I was doing leather. Boom. It went up to a three saying for leather use a 90 stretch. Okay. I don't really sew on leather. Um, an H, the H presser foot, which that is just, it just has, it helps it slide around. Boom. Easier. So it will tell you what presser feet to use and all that. So that's really nice because it just sets everything automatically. Um, so these are just the different stitches that it is. Now I don't, I usually go up here with the stitches. Um, I do know this is a straight stitch. Number two down here. Number four down here is basting. That's a basting stitch. Um, I think these are all zigzags. I don't know. Oh, no, maybe that's blind hem. Probably a blind hem stitch. But I didn't really look at them because I usually do other things. So up here, this is a straight stitch. Number two right here is the um, stretch stitch for light. Um, number three is, which I really like this stitch, it's a reinforcement st stitch. So like for if you're making pants and you have the crotch area or the underarm area or clothes, you know, anywhere that needs a little extra reinforcement, um, that's a reinforced stitch. And it kind of goes forward, back, forward, back. I really like that stitch. Um, number four is the, the three-way zigzag stitch. And number five is just the regular, just a regular zigzag stitch. Um, um, yeah, it's all in the manual. This, let me see what it is. Oh, it's a flat lock stitch. I never used it. Decorative hems and overlap seams, belts and bands for medium heavy stretch fabrics. Okay, so then seven is the overcast stitch. I really like that one. 
um, it's kind of like a, you know, kind of like if you don't have a serger and you don't want to finish your seams, you can use these stitches. So that one is for um, light stretch and non-stretch fabrics. And eight is a stretch seam overcast stitch. So seam and overcast in one step, you know, for medium and medium heavy stretch fabrics. So, yeah, I love these because sometimes if I don't want to get my serger out or blah, 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 you know, these work really nice. Um, and then there's all of these stitches. I'm going to put that down. Well, let me, let me just talk about what's up here first, and then I'll get to these stitches. Okay, so that's what all of these. There is number seven or number zero right here, which is just a regular buttonhole. And what's really nice is I can't find my presser foot for the regular buttonhole, but you can use that if you only have one buttonhole to do, but that's where you gotta stop it. So you gotta set the, you know, measurement and you stop when it gets to that and then you, you know, hit the reverse. It's more you doing it on your own. This, with this presser foot, you hook it up here. You just hook it up here and put this presser foot on and it will pop up. Um, it's not gonna do that right now because I don't have it in but it has everything set and then it will come up <clears throat> to um, like, I think it's 16 millimeters. I can't remember, but it's in millimeters. So you have to set your button. So if you have a 5 8 inch button, then you set it to that by millimeters. Um, and then what it does is it's just automatic and you click your presser foot, down and you go start to sew and it just comes and it's so straight and then it gets and it stops when it gets to the 5 8 or whatever you said how big the buttonhole was and then it it will go back and it will um you know kind of zigzag it a little I don't know however they do the button stitch then it gets up to the end and then it'll do a bar tack and then it comes down and makes the last stitch till it gets right to the end and then it does a bar tack so it automatically does it for you, all you have to do is hit the presser foot and the machine does everything else. So you can make one button like that, you can make 10 buttons like that. They're all pre-programmed and so it's very easy when you're making a blouse or something and you need to put a lot, lot of buttonholes in because then you're just like 10 buttonholes and you have it all set to the button size and it really works wonderful. They're all even the same. They're not like, you know, it's not like you're doing it yourself and you might made one a little bigger than the other. This just automatically does it. So it's really a nice feature. I love it. I love the buttonholes on this machine. Um, so these stitches up here, these are just extra stitches what the machine can do. But for instance, one, two, three, four, this tells you how to get to that stitch. So one, let's say one, this stitch, I want one, I want this one, the, the darning stitch. So one, 21. Okay, so this gets a little tricky, but you push down. So, oh, it went to 102, 102. <laughs> it's hard to get it exact. 112 now. Come on. This is what I don't like about it because they are, okay, it went 121. And then now it's all set up for darning. Um, and, you know, there's different buttonholes that can do the keyhole button, so you can set that. Um, it's just all these decorative stitches, which really, I don't, I use once in a while. All right, so over here, I'm gonna talk about this side. Over here, these two, um, buttons right here are the stitch length so if you press up the stitch length goes up if you press down the stitch length goes down this right here is the needle position so zero is center but as you press you can hear it I don't have the camera 
situated, but the needle is moving a little bit, and it moves so tiny. I like this. It, there's lots of um, places to move the fab, to move the fabric, to move the needle. So it works out really nice. I like it. Um, this right here, this this right here. I don't even use this, so I don't even know how to use it. It's all programmable stuff, um, which I don't program. You can, like if you want to do certain stitches and switch your decorative stitches up, you can program it. I don't use that. This I do use. This is a menu. Um, just has like foot pressure, auto, fix auto. I usually don't use that stuff, but I will use you know, push the down button and it goes down. Um, you know, I use a twin needle a lot. Um, so then you would just press OK, and then it would set the twin needle, and then hit the menu again, and then the twin needle is all set. When you are done with the twin needle, just go back to the menu, which is a little tool thing, and then I just hit OK, and then menu button again, and it goes back to the original setting. Um, so I am trying to see, oh, on the side, I didn't, that's the on off button. So on the side here, there's just a little switch. That's the on off button. And then there's also little out, you know, plugs to plug in your foot pedal and your cord um, is all on the side. I am trying to think of what else? Oh, this number nine, I don't think I talked about this um, stitch. That's a button, so you can actually sew a button on if you want, but that's number nine. Um, yeah, I'll show you how to clean it real quick. Um, so then I yeah, have to have the feed dogs down. So. Okay, so first thing feed dogs go down. So take it and it just slides right to the right. Um, and then they go down. And take screwdriver and this oh, let's take this off first. Screwdriver, pop it up. And it pops off. Take this little gray piece off and take this bobbin off. Um, then just take and sweep it out. Um, I like to turn it sometimes to here and then get in there a little more. Um, I just sweep out this. I try to clean it, you know, after every um, project or every two projects at least. Um, and I also have a little mini vacuum, like a vacuum that's a little mini tube that goes on my vacuum, and then I can vacuum it all good. That works out. But after you're all done with that, just take this, make sure this piece is right there, pop that in there, take the gray piece, and the gray piece will just lay right there. It's supposed to lay right on there. That must not be on. Great. On the best. It's not on. Well, this usually just goes so nice. There we go. Okay. That's on there. Let me take the plate. And just put the plate on and snap it down. Put that back on there. And then take and push your feed dog which is right down here, boom, to the left. It will not, you can see that although you moved it to the left, the feed dogs didn't go up. They will. They will as soon as you start stitching. I'll show you. So here, just to put your presser foot back on, it goes in. This spot goes in between there. It just goes in, clip. And to get the needle back on, uh, easy, just... I think I might, no I didn't, okay. I'm gonna put my press foot down. Well, I can actually lift that up. Um, the flat side of the needle goes toward the back, and just lift it 
up as far as it goes. Take your screwdriver and tighten it up. And that's that. So you can see the feed dogs are down, although you pushed it up. Watch what happens when you start to, you would have fabric, but you would start to sew. You can see, oh, uh, okay. I'm gonna lift up the presser foot. You can see that raised um So as soon as you start sewing, um, they raise up. So, I think that is all. I mean, that's all I can think of. So I hope it helped you out. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys. Um, like I said, I'll be uploading another video along with this so you guys have. I think it's going to be like a fabric haul or something. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.